All right, so good morning. This is uh, Douglas Smith. I'm with Paul Kirkley. Uh, he's a new agent in our office and uh, just hungry for business and always out on the go. He's been a member of his HOA and he's very much involved in the community. So he's teaming with an agent uh, this weekend to do an open house. So what we're doing this morning is just a probably about a 30 minute review of from beginning to end as if he never even knew what open house he was doing. And then he reached out to an agent and got the address and what to do if he was doing it on his own. So um, we're presenting, we're recording. So the first thing uh, that I always like to tell agents is um, the day they get their license, the first thing they need to do is stop at Home Depot. And when they stop at Home Depot, what they need to do is get 10 open house signs. Um, the cheapest open house signs are fine. Uh, they're gonna be five, six bucks. All they need to do is have an arrow and say open. Um, the reason why I tell people to get them inexpensively is because a lot of uh, people drive up and down the roads and play with them or steal them. Some cities have ordinances where if they're in a main intersection, they'll just come get them with a trailer and put them in a dump. So you, my opinion is you really don't want to spend a lot of money on open house signs. Um, so let's just say that Robert had asked me that in the beginning. Uh, that's what I would have told him to do. And I would have told him to do it right after he paid his board dues uh, to be that the, to, for that to be the next stop at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, then the next thing is that he's got to find a house. So there's multiple ways uh, to find a property. Uh, number one, when I clean up everybody's MLS, the screen will look like this. The reason why I have it look like this is because right here under my listings, it's going to have your activity, but it's also going to say my office active listings. And you can always click on that. And when you click on it, you should see 100 right here at the top. If you don't, and it only says 10, all you want to do is hit the down button, hit 100, and then hit the rotary and save that as a current page. And that just means that every time you have a list of properties, if it's under 100, it'll always show all of them on one screen. So you basically scroll down and you find a home that you might want to do an open house at. Um, now, we have an agent in our office. Has she listed that home yet? Uh, not yet. Okay. So um, it's going to be coming uh, soon. Uh, and it will be not coming soon, but it'll be in the MLS this weekend. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be doing open house Saturday with Paul. And her name is Frances Chappelle uh, Chapel. And she is the best agent in the world to uh, have somebody shadow because she's selfless and uh, is full of information and has great experience. Um, so the first thing is you want to find out what the address is. Now, generally speaking, when you go to our active listings, you would see it here, but she just hasn't put it in yet. So what I still would do is I would always go to my matrix at the top and hit my dashboard and get reset back on the main screen. And then what's the address, Paul? 1730. Misty Glen. Okay, so he said 1730 Misty Glen, and let's just say that we didn't know how to spell Misty, but we knew it started with an M because of M Misty. All we would do is morning, type Morning Mist. Okay, Morning Mist. So I just typed in 1730 and more M, and I'm just going to see if it was ever in the MLS before it was built. So you can see that as we go down, uh, we have right down here at the we have incoming, so that's perfect. And then if you look down a little further, you can see right down here, it says 1730 Morning Miss Way and Inspiration. So you can see there's an MLS number that's different than that one. And that one's different than that one. So it's had a history in the MLS in 2015, 2017, and now it's incoming. So what Paul's going to, what I'm going to recommend Paul do <clears throat> is click on the MLS number. And we know from training that anytime we click on the MLS number, that's called the agent full report. So we're gonna click on it. And I always like to print this because this is the most information that you can possibly have on a property. And you can see as you scroll down that it's got Francis uh, and it's got her information. Okay, now if, if this was not an agent that Paul knew, maybe he was doing an open house for another broker agent, then he would wanna print this. So he would have the contact information for the agent, okay? But it's probably a good idea for him to either get some graphics done or if he wants to kind of wing it, um, he can go right down here to the bottom and hit print. And when he hits print, he wants to pick customer flyer. And we're going to preview it. So we'll see what it looks like. Now, this will have his photo at the top. And it's just a little flyer as you scroll down. It's just enough to give to somebody 
that is a uh, potential client that walks in. You'll notice at the bottom, it does have Francis's number, I mean, uh, name and the broker, but it doesn't have her contact information. So again, what Paul's gonna do is he's gonna have a little packet or his IBS and he's gonna have a sign in sheet, which we're gonna get to next. But I would recommend that he prints this as a bare minimum and probably prints, you know, 10 to 20. Um, and always you wanna put these in the kitchen away from the front door. Um, and so what you want next is you want to absolutely have some type of sign in sheet. So he's going to print these and he's going to put these in the kitchen or some type of graphic in the kitchen. Then he's going to go into back agent, which this is our website for our intra office, dhsrealty.backagent.net. He's going to have his own login. And when he logs in, everybody will have the same screen that's about to come up. And that is at the top, it's going to say start transaction listing people office. He's going to hover over office. He's going to hover over documents. And then he's going to see quick resources. And the first one says DHS open house sign in sheet. He's going to click on that. It's going to open and he's going to print two or three of those. And when he prints them, he's going to actually have a table at the front door or something at the front door where he's going to put the sign in sheet. And what I always do is I sign in some generic person first so that people see what I want. So I might put James Donaldson, his email and his phone number, and I'll print it clearly so that when the next, when the first person comes in, they see that somebody already potentially came into the house, but they also see the way you want it done. Now there's an app called Open House that I downloaded and have it on my phone. Open House is an app that you can have them fill in their information and it'll never be wrong. You can't read it. Um, the only problem with the open house app is that if you're going to have it at the front door, it's either going to be on your phone or an iPad and you want to take off that, that privacy. So when it the screen goes dormant, you don't have to plug in your code because when somebody walks in, they don't want to sit there and wait for it to upload. And so you want it to be ready. Um, and, and that's a pretty cool app. It's called open house. Uh, that's what I use at champions when, um, uh, whenever I do an in-person um, uh, recruiting, you know, like at a career fair when we had them in person. Um, and I use it on my open houses as well. But you got to be ready for it. you got to see them walk in. And when you have like 20 people walk in, you're not going to be waiting there for – nobody wants to wait in line to fill in that form um, on, a, on an iPad. So you're going to open that up. So, so far what we know is that we've gone and found the open house. We printed the customer flyer. We've gone and printed um, the open house sign in sheet. Okay. So now we just talk about how we could be different on an open house than the other agents that are doing an open house. And what I've always recommended is that when you do an open house, you pull up all the active homes in the same subdivision and make appointments for them for the time that you're going to be at the open house. So we know that we need to hover over the search tab go to residential quick. And we know that everybody should have an MLS criteria search very similar. So for me, I already have active marked as well as most of the agents in our office. And I already have down here single family marked and you should as well. And I like to mark master down, but that's just me. Now, if you're doing an open house and the house has a master on the second floor, well then don't mark master down. But if the home has a master down, or it's a single story, I think that's the best resale. So I'm gonna go ahead and only show homes that have master down unless the client tells me they don't care. If they tell me they don't care, I am gonna to talk to them about resale and how a master down is more important because we have an aging baby boomer population. They don't wanna traverse the stairs every night when they go to bed. For uh, resale, it's good because like my wife and I, we're in our 50s, our kids are moving out. We have a master down. Our kids have one bedroom down, but everything else is up. We can just turn off the unit. We never have to sell the home. We'll have grandkids over or whatever the future holds, but it's a great resale topic. So we know that that right now is showing over 5,000 homes because we don't have anything else. So what I always like to do is go up to subdivision, which is right below the search criteria on the left. And I'm going to type in inspiration, but I'm not going to really do anything other than inspiration. And I'm going to put the asterisk, which is the shift button. And you can see that right now there's zero. So now I'm gonna uncheck mark master down and see if anything changes. And you can see there's one home. 
Okay, so there's not a lot of activity right now in inspiration. I'm going to hit results and I'm going to see that here's the home. I'm going to click on the MLS number. And right below the picture of the home, you'll see there's a clock. And right below the clock, you see there's that little blue. And if you hover over it right underneath the clock, which is underneath the picture of the home, if you hover over it, it says schedule showing. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And it's going to automatically take me right there. It's going to automatically take me into showing time. And I'm going to go ahead and make an appointment for this home. So I'm going to hit schedule showing. Just scroll down a little. And I'm going to go ahead and schedule it for the open house, which is what time? Uh, I'll say 11 to 2. Okay. So 11 to 2 Saturday. So you're going to basically click on Saturday at 11. And when you click on it, so hit, uh, hit schedule one showing. Okay, we'll do that in a second then. I'm going to do it for you. So here we are. And again, let me just go back to make sure that we're on the same page. So um, you're just going to select Saturday and you're going to pick 11. And once you pick 11, it'll say how long you want to show. Now, it's only an hour window. Knowing that you're going to get there at 11 and it's what, 11 to 1? What I like to do is make the showing 1130 to 1230. That gives you 30 minutes when people will come in to be able to talk with them and you still have an hour window that you're going to they're only letting you show it for an hour so if you're going to be there 11 to 1 why not make it 11 30 to 12 30 to kind of get that perfect timing versus just straight 11 to noon and then you have somebody show up at you know 12 and you're screwed so that's what we'll do we'll do 11 30 and now you have a drop down it says how long do you want to show it for and you want to pick the longest time frame and then you hit request an appointment and we just made an appointment. So now you're set on that property. So if anybody walks in, what you'll want to do is say, um, hey, um, I made appointments for everything. Uh, now, what you have to realize is that we just kind of screwed up because that's not the same city. So that's good to know. So we need to go back into MLS. <clears throat> and what happened is most likely the way inspiration is is not is not that same writing so i'm going to go here again to 17 30 morning and we're going to see exactly how she has the subdivision that auto populated so it says inspiration and i might have just spelled it wrong so i'm going to copy and paste it and i'm going to go back and do a residential quick search and i'm going to go down here and i'm just going to paste I'm going to go ahead and hit the asterisk, even though I didn't put the N in there, I'm good because that asterisk auto populates and you can see that there's not, there's not a property other than that one that's in Riverdale or whatever. Yeah. So now what we're going to do, because we're all we're trying to do is be prepared in case a buyer wants to look at other properties right up here at the middle, you're going to still mark master down because their house is a master down. It is. And you're going to pick a mileage. Let's just start with five miles. And right here, you're going to slowly type 1730 morning mist. And it's going to auto populate. And there, that's the way it pulls up in Wiley, even though it's St. Paul. So we're going to select it. And you can see that five miles from that home are 72 homes. So now we know that that home was listed under half a million. So we could go, uh, let's just do 400 to 500,000. And now there's 19. Um, we know that home was probably built in 2015. So we can go 2012 and a plus sign. And now there's 12. That's perfect. Uh, I probably would do square footage. I want to do a little bit to bring that down from even 12. And I would imagine the square footage is what? 30. Yeah, so I'm going to do 3,000 and a plus sign. And now there's two. That's perfect. I actually might just take this out and go 2,500 because I want a little more than just two, four. Perfect. So now you hit results and now you check all and you print and you're going to print a customer flyer. And when you're going to go print it, you're going to get one of each of those pages. That's what you're going to keep or you could give that out. If you give it out, then you absolutely want to also, while you're here, hit the control button and print for agent full reports because that's what's going to have the contact information for the agents, okay? Once you print those, you go back 
And what you're going to see is that all you have to do is click on it. You're going to go right underneath the picture and click on that. And you know that you can go ahead and make an appointment. I'll let you do that once you get CSS worked out. Then you just hit the next button. And you you see that there's no button for CSS. So that means you have to scroll to the bottom and you have to read here what it says. Download open door. So they have an app. They make the appointment for you. So you'll download that. But you'll read that every time. Now we go to the next one. There's four we're going to make an appointment for. So you go to the next one. You see that one has the little link. So that's good. You go to the next one. It has a little link. So out of the four, three are gonna be super simple to make an appointment, but you absolutely wanna do it today for Saturday in case there's any showing instructions or like it's a 48 hour window or 24 hours before you can do an appointment. Um, and so that's that's how you're gonna do that. Um, now, obviously you wanna have a little home buyer packet. So you want something um, that's real basic. It's gonna be a cover page maybe that says tax guide. It's gonna have your bio, Paul. It's gonna have your resume. You're going to put the IBS in there. And then I like to go ahead and print a buyer rep agreement. And in paragraph one, I like to put your name goes here. And I just like to have it in my packet. So when I meet somebody, I'm like, hey, uh, a little bit about this house, master down. It's a great subdivision inspiration. Um, I made appointments for four houses that are within five miles of this home. Uh, here they are. If you want to take a flyer, um, you know, or if you want, I already made appointments for them and I can lock this home up and uh, or Francis will stay here and I'll go show you uh, these other four homes um, because that's everything 400 to 500. Um, I love to be your agent. I love to earn your business and be your advocate. One of the big things I like to talk about is, you know, what does this, what does the backyard face? So when you do the open house, you're going to just click on that picture or that address and it's going to pull up how the property is situated in regards to the sign. We know that over here is the west because this is always north south. So as you zero in on it, you can see that it doesn't get much better because that's the west. And that looks like that's the back entrance garage. So there's a little bit of shade here. So that's a north south home. So that would be good. And as you walk up to the door, you can be talking to them as you show them other homes like, hey, I'm, I'm a big advocate of a backyard that has summertime shade. This one actually has a front entrance garage. So over here, this is this is the east. So there'll be some shade right over there. So you see that? Um, and you can see that when they took this picture, it looks like the shade was starting to already start. So this was in the evening because the sun was starting to shade this over here. Or it could be in the morning. Uh, probably not in the morning because this is going to be due north right here. Uh, but anyways, it gives you a good idea. So you can always... Uh, you can always look at that. Um, so now let's talk about uh, the day of the open house. Uh, if, if Paul's doing the open house at 11, it sounds like he's got a partner with him, Francis. And we're big advocates for safety that you always have an agent with you. No matter if you're a guy or a girl, uh, realtors are assaulted every day in real estate because we advertise that we're going to be alone at a house from 12 to 4 or 11 to 1. We show up in a car. Uh, we have a sign that says, hey, the door's not even locked. Come on in. So it's always going to be a good idea to always have an advocate with you as an agent and an, another agent in our office that uh, you, you almost it, it's almost better to have two than one. And you work out some type of program before you get there on how you're going to split leads, uh, who's going to stay at the house and who's going to go show a buyer if they want to look at the other homes that you made an appointment on. Um, you want to talk about resale. I think that uh, I follow a, a broker out of Arizona who always says you lead with abundance. That's what I try to do with my agents. And that's what I want Paul to do when he meets a buyer or a seller is you lead with abundance. So I want him to talk about the soil. We have a lot of clay and caliche. We have to have a watering system in our foundation, a soaker hose, or uh, we need to have a sprinkler. You need to talk about resale. Always talk about the backyard, what it's going to face the backyard, the, the patio in the summertime, which we're going to hit in another 30 days. It's going to be really hot. You're going to hear the buyer say, I've never heard that before. And at that point, as long as Paul knows not to talk about political stuff, then we're going to be golden. And he'll have that buyer. It's not that hard. It's just a return on time. It's the time commitment on an open house. So he's going to get their cell phone and their email, and that is going to be from uh, the open house. Now, let's say that he met a buyer that said, yeah, I like, I like Wiley. I like St. Paul, but really I like the whole North Dallas area. And he would say, well, why don't I just do a search for you right now while you're here? So he can be logged into MLS. 
and he's just going to hover over search, go residential quick. That's our, that's our money maker right there. Search residential quick, search residential quick, search residential quick. He's going to already have it active and marking single family homes. So let's say the buyer goes, Hey, I want anything 2000 uh, newer. Well, there we go. He's going to obviously give the buyer, he or she will give us a price range. Let's do 350 to 500. And, you know, I like, I like Collin County, Paul. Well, you can go right here to Collin County. Now that's too many homes, 128. So now we need to talk about, do they want a one story or a two story? Let's say they wanted a one story, one dash one. Now there's 83. Let's say they wanted a three garage, three and the plus sign. Okay, you got to have the plus sign or you'll just pull up three garages. Um, you got to have a two plus or you'll just pull up two garages. So two plus. There's 82, but watch when I went three plus. There's 10. That's perfect. So what he's going to want to do, and this is what we're always going to always train on. Always. This is the way you send a search. You hit results. When you hit results, you're interested in only one tab, and that's the save tab. You click it and you only have three options. You always pick new auto email. Now, let's say that it's a new client. You're always gonna have to create a new client. So this is gonna be um, Daffy Duck. And you're gonna have an email. That's all you need to put in to save this client. You hit save and now you have him right there. And then here, you're just gonna put something in this subject line for them to know, but you're right next to them at the open house. So just put homes. You're gonna wait for them to get this. Then you scroll down. Now, before you hit save, I want everybody to always click ASAP. What that means is that the moment you send this search, which right now I just sent it by hitting save, it just got sent to Daffy Duck. He just got these 10 properties. But in the next second, if a new listing gets inputted that fits this criteria, he's gonna get it automatically. And the other day I had a guy I'm showing today at 11 named Josh Elmore. And uh, he called me and said, Hey, I got a property at 2 AM last night. Uh, thanks for being up that late. And I was like, I wasn't up that late. I just saved the search. And that's part of the benefit that I do and want to leave with you guys is that you always want to hit that ASAP before you hit save. Now, the way I've set your phone up is that if Daffy Duck opens this portal, number one, you're going to get an email, you're going to get an email, you're going to get a text. And then when you log in next time, it's going to say Daffy Duck right there. If there's a heart next to it, all you do is click on the heart and it'll go right to the property that they hearted. So we already have that set up. That's a setup for success. Okay. Um, you're always going to have that. And so when you see these recent portal visitors, you absolutely should have got a text message when they opened it. And the way you always know is you go to my matrix, which let's do that real quick and you go to summary. When you go to summary, you go to settings. When you go to settings, you go to portal visit, portal notification. And when you go to portal notification, you're going to see this setup. Now, what I do is I just like it when they save a favorite and it comes to me. But you can also mark visit portal and visit for the first time. And you always want to hit save. And once you hit save, that means that you're going to get a text message because now you can go back into portal and you can see that now it's marked the way you saved it. Okay. So it's up to you that, but what I've done every time is that we set it up with your phone number and your phone, phone provider so that you get a text message because that's the most fluid way to stay in touch with a client. And then you hit save. All right. So we know that that's how we're going to do it. And then what I always do uh, is when I'm at an open house, uh, I like to get five $10 gift cards to Starbucks. Uh, and I have them in the kitchen with my flyers. And then at the door, I either have the open house app or I have the sign in sheet. So you're in the, let's just say on, on uh, Saturday, you're in talking with Francis. You are going to have a discussion on how you're going to proceed when somebody pops the door. But at some point you hear somebody open the door. And you just look over at him and you go, hey, my name's Paul. I'm with DHS Realty. Uh, if you sign in there, I'll grab you a graphic. And everybody that signs in today uh, gets a $10 gift card to Starbucks. Uh, and you start to turn and go to the kitchen as they're signing in. And then you look back at them and you say, oh, and by the way, put your realtor down so I can protect them in case you like this house. I don't want to take a commission from your realtor. 
And if they look back at you and say, Paul, we don't have a realtor, then it's game on for you and Francis. Okay. If they go, oh, okay, it's it's Doug Smith out of ABC Realty. Well, then you don't need to kick them out, but you know, be your normal self, but you're not going to be trying to talk to them to gain them as a client. Okay. Uh, I don't like to cross signs. I don't like to try to steal a client from another realtor. Uh, I just take them for their word. And as soon as they go, oh, we have a realtor. I go, okay, no problem. We'll look around any questions. Let me know. Uh, now, if they say they want to look at any properties that I made an appointment for, that's where I would say, you know what? I just don't work that way. So you're going to need to call your own agent to show you those properties. All right. I don't ask them if they've signed anything. I just take it for face value that I don't want that reputation of taking a client from another agent because I wouldn't want that to happen to me. So at the end of the day, you treat people the way you would want to be treated. Um, so let's say that they go, uh, we don't have an agent. Then you go, okay, cool. We'll sign in and I'm going to grab you a graphic and a gift card. So you go in and grab a graphic and a gift card. Don't do, you don't have to do the gift card if you don't want. I've just found that that's a great way. Um, now, if, uh, if you give it to them and they go, hey, well, can you tell me a little bit about the house? Well, then you got to know the ballpark, you know, numbers. Uh, built in 2015, 3,900 square foot. Backyard faces uh, due east for summertime shade. You know, that's real important in the summer. Um, have you ever lived here for a summer? And you just be quiet and see what they say. And if they go, oh, yeah, we're from California. We love the sun. So that's not a big deal with us. Well, then you need to say, you know what? It probably wouldn't be a big deal for, for me either if I lived in, in California because the sun sets over an ocean. But we don't have that here in Texas. And so a major component of resale is a backyard that faces either north, south or east. And if it's north or south, we want the patio on the farthest east side of the property so that the house shades that east side and creates a natural breeze in the summer. And generally, the buyer will look at you and say, I've never heard that before. And if they say that, then um, you know you got one hook in them, and now you just got to make sure you don't lose them off the hook. So as you're walking around with them, and again, I don't hover over people. I just kind of, you know, I feel like they're adult. They know what a bedroom is. Um, but you know, if you have some key features you want to show them, then, then do it. And, um, it's just a natural progression when you open the garage to tell them, oh, this home has a sprinkler system. They might say, we're not, we don't really care about the yard. And you might say, well, I don't really care if you care about the yard, but I care that for resale, we water the foundation. And so a sprinkler is really not so much about the yard as it is about keeping the sides of the house where the slab touches the soil moist to where when we have these big rains like we had last week or yesterday with a flash flood, that it doesn't shock the soil. That it's naturally, uh, it, it's a recurring theme that the foundation and the soil has water that hits it so that mm -hmm. it just keeps snug to the foundation and you don't have foundation problems. Uh, and they'll go, wow, man, I've never heard that before, Paul. That's crazy. Uh, hey, did you vote for Trump? And you just don't want to get involved with that question. Hey, do you vote for Biden? I love Biden. Well, whoever they voted for, you're going to love them. And that's the way that we keep clients is we don't get political. What we do is we talk about resale. And there's really two or three things that don't take rocket science to explain to a buyer they've never heard before. And they are, I swear, you know, going to say something like, wow, I've just never heard that before. Uh, hey, do you have a business card? And again, you're going to give them your home buyer packet. But what we're a big advocate of here at uh, DHS Realty is that you have an electronic business card. And that's on the app Haystack. Uh, Jenny Gilcrest, she also has electronic cards she sends you. Uh, but the way that you get the electronic business card to the client is you get their cell phone. So that means that even if they printed it wrong or you couldn't read it on the sign-in sheet, it's another form to verify you have the right phone number. And if you go, you know what, I just don't have business cards. I found they're not productive. I have electronic business card that's tied to all my social media. Um, if you want to send me your cell phone right now, I'll send it to you while we're here. Sure. Hold on a second, Paul. It's 214-555-1212. Boom. Well, I just sent it to you. Um, and then you start a conversation with them. Like, you know, are y'all from around here? Do you, do you live here? Do you have a house to sell? Uh, are you in an apartment? Is the lease up? Are you month to month? It's just a natural flow. Like you're talking to your best friend. And as you get some of these key phrases like, oh yeah, we looked at a few houses yesterday. Well, you need to, you need to move in on that question and find out if they're promiscuous with realtors or they want a monogamous relationship with one. And again, you don't want to take somebody away from a, a, a client away from an agent, but if they say they've met with agents, you need to find out if they have anything signed. 
because you don't want to continue to show that buyer because they're just using agents. Instead, you want to use your time wisely and say, hey, um, you know, in real estate in Texas, we use one agent. So I'd love to earn your business if you don't have a realtor, but if you have a realtor, you should really stick with them because when you sell your house to buy, they should negotiate their commission to where you net the most on your house because they're going to get paid by the seller when you buy. And you, you always want to have a buyer's agent when you go and look at houses, because if you don't, you're basically not being represented and the agent that represents the seller is just making, you know, normally double but you're not represented. So I'd love to talk to you about agency. Um, that would probably require, you know, us making a, uh, you know, some time either via zoom or meet somewhere. And, and, you know, I'm an open book. I want to lead with abundance. I want you to be educated as a buyer. And so I absolutely want you to understand how the real estate process works and the checks you write, how many days it takes to close, um, what you could lose and what you could not lose when you write some checks, why I think writing some checks is better uh, after, then before um, the option time expires, because if you write an appraisal, for instance, um, while you're in your option, and you do an option and you end up not liking the house, you've just paid for an appraisal on a house you're not going to buy. So we ought to absolutely set the appraisal after the option time. You know, there's about four or five checks you write when you buy a home. I'd love to go over that process with you. Um, so, uh, you know, my brokerage firm that I've strategically aligned myself with, um, Collectively, we have over 130 agents, 120 agents. Uh, we have every designation, you know, that you could possibly need in the real estate transaction. Uh, we have, you know, 50, 60 years experience. Those are all things that you want to say we, because now you're incorporating the brokerage firm. And the reality is that once you sign a buyer rep agreement with a client, uh, every agent in that office really represents that client. So you can use we and all the designations that, that they have. OK, uh, you could say, you know, we have a brokerage firm that, uh, you know, the broker owner uh, does training, trains us up. Uh, he's side by side with me. So you're really getting two agents for, you know, the price of nothing, because when you're a buyer, generally speaking, you don't pay the commission. Um, does that make sense? So that's kind of how we do it. Um, if, uh, you know, and again, let me just talk about how you can find open houses and, and then I'm going to stop the training, which has been about 20 minutes. And then I'm going to really help Paul, uh, mano y mano. Uh, what Paul did is he, uh, reached out. We have a app called group me. And I think most likely you reached out and just said, Hey, anybody doing open houses this weekend or anybody have a house? I'd love to do an open house. Uh, so we have a group me app. He put his cell phone after that text message and Francis got back with him. Let's say that he left that message and it was dormant. Nobody got back with him. Well, Paul is not going to rely on other people to be successful. He's going to take an initiative. So one thing that he could do is he could log into MLS and when he logs in, his screen will look like this and he could go right over here to my office active listings and he's going to see 19 and he could scroll down and he could open up every single one of them. Now, the first four are leases, so he could start. I don't think you're going to do an open house on a land deal. <laughs> so he's going to start and go, huh, let's look at that condo. So he clicks on the MLS number and he scrolls to the bottom. And he goes, oh, Jessica. So he texts Jessica that 206 number. Hey, Jessica, this is Paul. I'm with the company. I'd love to do an open house on your condo this Saturday, 12 to 3, 11 to 1, whatever. And, and just says, hey, would you mind? And waits for Jessica to reach out to, to him. OK, so that's one way you can always you have 19 options there. All right. The second way is, uh, well, first off, the first way was group me. He put a text message out. The second way was doing this. And the third way is Paul goes, you know what? I just don't want to drive that far from my house. So let's see what's available in the marketplace around where I live. So. Let's just use me as an example, because I don't want Paul to have to put his address in here. So he goes to search. He goes to residential. He goes to quick. And again, he only wants to do open houses on active homes. And so at first, I always start five miles out. And now here's the neat thing about this. You don't have to use what's preset there. OK, so if you wanted, you could put 50 miles. OK, and then you just slowly start typing in the address. Eight thousand five. Fall Meadow. As I type in Fall Meadow, it's going to pull it. And that is the home that I live in. So now I can see there's 125 homes that are five miles from 8,000.
five Falmetto. Well, I want to be a little more selective. I want to do 2010 and newer. Um, okay, now there's 22. Uh, maybe I want, you know, a price range that is not a hundred thousand. So I go, huh, how many are in that golden price range? Right now, 300 to 450 is golden and they're zero. <laughs> That's why. So I, I, I leave it blank. I know that I really don't want anything under that price range. Um, but let's say I did zero to 300 or zero. Well, that means that all those homes are over half a million. So half a million to 800, there's nine, okay? Now how about um, a three garage? Because if they're in that price range, they should have a three garage in my opinion to make my open house worthy. Well, look at that, there's zero. So I leave that back out. Uh, maybe I just want single stories. There's one, so that's not gonna work. So I still do one dash two or just leave it blank. And so now I'm gonna probably just go to bedrooms and see what comes up. Um, let's say uh, five plus, there's still one. So I'm gonna start with nine. I'm gonna hit results. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the first MLS number. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and I'm gonna text Jajit Singh at 214, that number and go, hey Jajit, this is uh, Paul. I uh, live uh, inside of five miles from your uh, listing and was just wondering if I could do an open house this weekend. Paul says no, or uh, 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 Jay says no. So all he does is either clicks the two button or he goes back up to the top and hits next. He goes to the second home, he goes to the bottom. Oh, look at that, he's got another listing there. It means he might be willing to put it on the open house, especially because you know it's 505 days on the market. It looks like it might be a new home, Megatel. So what Paul could also do is go to Megatel and say, hey, I live a couple miles from the, your, your builder. Any way I could do open house on any of your spec homes? Maybe that's an option. Let's say they say no. He goes to the third option. He scrolls down. I think you get my point. He can go all the way one through nine, and at some point, somebody's going to say yes, or he might get multiple yeses, and then he knows what to do. Okay. So there's always a way to find open houses. And uh, my son Mitchell did uh, a month ago a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday open house, and they were all two miles from this address. And he did it the same way I'm doing it right now. So, um, so that's the end of our training. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log off, and then um, we will uh, present this to the group me, and uh, y'all be safe and call me with any questions today.